Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, depending from uh, where you have joined us. Um, I'm very glad to be here and uh, being your presenter today. As I said, my name is Timo Stark. I'm developer advocate for, for Nginx, um, working with, with Nginx and, and friends for like more than 12 years right now. And I'm pretty, pretty excited to give you a webinar today about a completely new project at Nginx called Nginx Unit. And the agenda for this, for today's webinar is like, I give you a brief overview about what Nginx Unit is and where we come from. Um, then we will start with a common use case and configure Nginx Unit to host a uh, single page as application created in React.js. Then we will add some, some APIs to that to make, well, make it more functional. And at the end, we will give, or I will give you a short overview about how you can secure your applications, what features do we have. Um, as I think, yeah, doing the webinar, we have Q&A open. Um, I have a colleague next to me um, to answering all your Q&A while I'm talking. So feel free to put anything in the Q&A um, while I'm talking, and we will make sure that all answers um, all questions will be answered accordingly. Yeah, let's hop into introduction of, of Nginx unit. Um, I th yeah, most of you are very familiar with Nginx as a web server, as a reverse proxy. Um, and Igor Sosoyev, back in the days, is the, the, the creator and founder of the, the Nginx project and product. And he tried to solve a very specific problem back in the days um, that he had. And that was, how can I handle more connections, more customer um, on a single server instance? That was the whole reason why he invented Nginx. And it started, as you can see here, the green line, it started officially with, a, with one of the first releases back in 2001, like the invention, and then 2004 with the first releases. General 0 0.1 version was back in 2011. And Nginx, was or is today the most used web server um, on the market with, an, with a market share of around 37%. And this is, as I said, you already know Nginx as a web server, as a reverse proxy. Um, you probably have used it. And today I wanna demonstrate what we have new and what is what, what are the difference between Nginx and Nginx unit. The common Nginx use cases are are pretty clear. We can do load balancing for TCP, UDP, and HTTP. Um, we do reverse proxying, a web server, content cache, web application firewall, um, all that kind of things. But with unit, we try to solve a completely different problem. And as I said, Nginx unit is a completely new, fully open source and free project um, that does not share any code with the Nginx web server at all. It is, as I said, a completely new product and project. And we try to attack the problem of all the complexity that we have in our today's application runtime and the application stack in the complexity of managing and serve, present or host our service for our customers or users. Um, because the today's application stack is a very complex ecosystem. Let's start with a with a code on the very very bottom of this of this slide. Um, it depends on the language you're using. Is it JavaScript? Is it Java? Is it Python? PHP? You name it. On top of that, we add some runtime environment, either an application server or a set of binaries like Node.js or Go. Um, then we have something like a reverse proxy in front of it doing maybe HTTPS, reverse proxying, load balancing. Then before the client, we do some edge st stuff like Cloudflare or global load balancing, things like that. And then at the end, we have the, the client in the browser. Each and every layer adds complexity to the stack and it makes it complicated and hard for the engineers to manage all, all of these different steps, how to configure, how to push configuration from one stick to another, some config 
depends on the application code. Some configuration has to be made in the application runtime. The other one has to be made in the proxy layer. So it's very, very complicated to keep everything in, in sync and to configure everything accordingly. And like a, a, an example I want to make here um, is with something that we have in the real world, just to make it a little bit more easier to understand. What is mobility for us today? I can buy a train or I can buy aircraft, but that is not mobility, right? So then I own a train, I own an airplane, but that means nothing. That, that does not mean that I'm that I'm in, in some sort mobile or that I have mobility. These two things are really things. A train is a thing, an aircraft is a thing. Same applies to your application code. The code alone is not a service. It does not represent a service. If the application code is a thing in an ecosystem that we just saw, and it's like a train and the aircraft. It's something that can carry things, right? But it's not mobility. It's nothing you can consume out of the box. To make it consumable, there is a lot more to it. You need a train station, you need an, an airport, you need some folks managing and taking care of the folks at the airport, the train station, maintenance and all that stuff. So it's a lot more to this picture to make mobility or create mobility as a service based on a train or an aircraft. And this is the reason why we created Nginx unit because we believe that there is a better way and a more efficient way to manage and host your application stack and create real end-to-end -end services for your users um, instead of just hosting um, application code. So I come back to this picture. With unit, what we can do, we combined all layers we saw in the previous slide from the very top, that means from the listener part to the proxying routing, routing engine down into the application runtime. So with Nginx unit, we have a product and a project that combines all layers that's needed to serve and create a, like a real end-to-end -end experience. You can run your Java code, you can run your node code, your JavaScript code, your Python code, your PHP app on unit natively. Then you can make configurations about routing, static file shares. And on the very top, we have the network stack that can expose listeners that can enable TLS termination and certificate management and all that. So that is the real unique thing why unit exists because we believe that this can simplify the application stack a lot. And just to combine, like to wrap this a little bit more up, um, as that we can, first of all, run your application code. Today, we support seven different languages. I will come to that in a minute. We can serve static assets. That means we have a, a built-in web server. That is the, the use case we will see in the single page application demo. And we can proxy to backends. So simple HTTP proxying is also part of the of Nginx unit as a, as a, um, a feature. And again, because that was a common question during other uh, webinars and talks, this product is 100% open source and completely free. Right, and the, the, the use cases we try to attack here is first simplify your microservice stack. That means that we do not need an application runtime and the reverse proxy and all of that may be in a single container and deal with all the complex stuff of having multi-demonized containers and manage all this, all this stuff on, on, on Kubernetes. For example, we can have Nginx unit that handles all that for us with a single configuration, with a single configuration syntax without dealing with multiple products at the time. Modernized monolith is that Nginx unit can run in a container, but it can also run on a VM. And on a VM, we have all the capabilities um, we need to modernize our currently existing applications, to add features to them and to make it easier manageable, for example, to 
to uh, enable HTTPS, to change environment variables and, and all that kind of stuff. And on the very right, this is an interesting thing here. Um, why can I say we secured the application runtime? That is because with Nginx unit, we added kind of the same ideas and same implementations that you have with Docker. We can isolate the namespaces and the Linux namespaces. We can isolate the network stack. We can isolate the, the process IDs and things. Um, each and every process or application can run under its own run user. So you can isolate your currently existing applications on a VM, for example, um, with a variety of features in Nginx unit that makes it more isolated, therefore more secure to run more than one application at a time on a single on a single VM or server. So yeah, that's that's basically all set here. Um, let's see. Right. Um, yeah, something I want to mention here. Um, I've talked about the configuration syntax and that we have one configuration syntax that applies to all to all the application, um, all the languages and all kinds of applications we host under a single unit instance. And the unit configuration, and this is something we will see in the demo as well, is red. we have a RESTful configuration or an API that you can send JSON files on the on one hand to send a JSON payload to an, to an API that will reconfigure your unit instance, or you can use the JSON, the JSON objects and go to a very specific part of, of the configuration and change, for example, a single environment variable or a single listener, single route. And I will see this in the demo in a minute. And this is all without restarting Nginx, without reloading the configuration manually. This is all zero downtime, fully integrated and automated. So send the config to the unit config endpoint. Unit will pick up the configuration changes, will reconfigure the server without a downtime and without having a need of restart the process manually by hand. Right, this is a wrap up about security. Already I mentioned most of it, and we have a more detailed um, slide at the end of this presentation. Um, so make sure you keep your questions till then. I probably will will answer most of them. All right, so enough for slides um, because I think we are here to see something real in action. That's why I really want to show you now um, a demo about Nginx um, unit, how that all works. All right, um, so I'm connected to my Linux box here. At the moment, we support Nginx unit for Linux operating systems. Details will be in the presentation in a minute and um, Mac OS. So Windows is not supported at the moment. All right, so we have unit already installed and up and running. Let's grab that and show you. We have um, the latest version 27.0. And then we see here a couple of things. First, we have a controller, a router, and the main process. All good. All right, so how to get started in general is we install unit, the runtime, and for the single page application use case, there is no need of a language module. This is something I will cover in a bit for this demo. All you need to do is up install, for example, up install unit, um, and then you're golden. So um, let's hop over to some source code. Um, I've created a small demo application in React.js um, that we can see in the browser here. That's basically a web service, a um, couple of static assets. We have images, we have CSS. Uh, we do something like the React router stuff so that the React application takes care of invalid locations in the URI and handles a 404. All right, so let's jump in and see um, how that works. Yes, yeah, we have a simple React-based application. Um, we have a build output 
with an index HTML file and some static assets. And now what we need to do is we have to tell Nginx unit that we wanna share our static assets like the CSS, JavaScript, pictures, all that. And anything that relates in a 404 not found will be automatically directed to the index HTML so that the React router can take care of the request and handles the, the incoming request and displays the 404 page, for example. Um, anything we need is a configuration that looks like, like this. And I would like to start with the very top um, with the network layer that is called a listener. And we can have multiple listeners at the time. So at this time, we have a listener li listening on port 80, can do a listener on port 8080, you can specify a specific IP address. So star means we listen on all IP addresses connected to that virtual machine, to the server IP. Um, if you want to bring that down to, for example, localhost, you're totally fine to put localhost in here. Or if you want to connect it to some, some private IP addresses, whatever, feel free to add them here as well. So that means you can, you can make a decision that you have the choice who should be able to connect to that listener um, on what interface? Is it just localhost? If it, is it anything or is it a public IP? Um, that's totally fine to you. In this case, we are good with start 80, means any IP that's connected to that server will be able to connect to this listener. Then we have a pass object. And with the pass object, we tell, or we tell the Nginx unit server what to do with an incoming request. We send a request to port 80, and unit will pass it over to the router. And the router is a very, very powerful thing. We have an Nginx unit because what we do is we have a combination of actions and matchers. A match is, for example, I can show you this here. Um, a match will take care of incoming requests and look for specific parts of it, of the host name the URI, we can match headers, we can match cookies, we can match HTTP options like get, post, put, all kind of all kind of things. And based on a given match, we can invoke an, an action. So in this case, um, what we have here is we match if a given host, for example, is localhost, and the URI is anything with environment slash star, so anything that starts with environments. If this is the case, we will send, or we will share a config.json file from this given directory. Reason why I'm doing it is, it is always a little bit tricky in React.js, as is all client side code, to protect your API endpoints or the URLs, the host names for, your, for the endpoints, um, based, for example, on, an, on a given host name. So what we can do here with unit is we can define our environments. So this is, for example, the development environment. And we can have the production environment as well. And in React.js, I created some code that will reach out initially to environments and receive the config JSON file. And I will configure my, my environment accordingly to this configuration. So there's no need of having your production host names, your staging host names, development host names, hard-coded in your React app, even if it's client side, because Nginx unit will be able to share some config files that you can configure your React app based on, based on uh, this response. But the only thing we need without without this extra add-on, we, we would need to configure to make the single page application work after we have built it, uh, is we define an action. There's no need for a match in this case. A match is optional and action is always required. And what we can do is we can tell unit share, and this is an array. We can say first try to find the given URI in this particular directory. So given, we use localhost slash static slash CSS slash main A2 whatever dot CSS. Unit will be able to find this CSS file and send it in a response. 
if we send something, for example, we already saw here, something that does not exist, Nginx unit will then send this request to the index.html file and the index.html file and the React router will take care of the request and display the custom 404 page we have created inside of our React application. And this is the config is all we need to make Nginx unit work for single page applications. So as a wrap up, add the install unit, then create a config that looks like this, a listener and a route array with an action share, and that's it. No application needed at this time, no other routes needed at this time. It's all you need to host your static, your static application, your static um, files and your single page application. All right. So next is we will talk about Nginx unit as the application runtime, because what we can see here, go back to the landing page, um, we should see some weather forecast favorite data in our React app, but saying not implemented. Deploy the API on unit to see this feature. And the API endpoint, which is localhost API, we want weather favorites is sending 405, not implemented. Here we can see our environment response that we already saw in the config that tells our React that, hey, the weather API is located under HTTP localhost. And for production, it will point out to another host name. Great, so let's check what we can do to make a Python application in this case, um, running on, on Nginx unit. The reason why um, I choose Python for this demo is because it's the simplest and most efficient way to run um, and getting started application on a unit because Python is, the Python binaries are part of like most or all operating system we currently support. So that's why the Python three or two runtimes are already there. And the only thing we need is a language module. And a language module is our implementation in that case of the WSGI or ASGI interface. For PHP, we are talking to the server API. So there's no need, for example, in the PHP term, no need of creating or installing an FPM, which was the like the old way of doing it, um, or using somewhat PHP and Apache. Unit implements something that is like an FPM. So we take care of the PHP processes. We take care of um, handling the PHP requests. Same with Python, same with Ruby, um, and all the other languages you can see here. So the language modules, as said, are something you can install. They are pre-packed and pre-built. And there is a simple app to install Unit Python, Unit Ruby, Java, and PHP. Um, and that will install the language module. And the language module is represented in something that's called a type. Um, a type tells Unit what kind of application is that. Is it Python, Ruby, Java, PHP? And what you can see here on the right is an example that we can host all different languages, all kinds of languages, and even more, all, diff all kind of different versions like Python 2 and 3, Java 8 and 11, PHP 5, 7, and 8, all on the same unit instance. There's no need of having multiple servers, multiple installations because of languages. If you want to host your PHP 5, 7, and 8 applications on a single box, isolated, no problem. Unit can definitely do this for you. Um, same applies to all the other application languages. As well as the configuration syntax you see here on the right is for all application languages the same. They are language specific config syntax um, in an application object. That's what we can see here. Um, so for example, for Java, we have something that's called FastPath. Um, for PHP, we have something to tell unit what are the PHP options. Um, so very specific things per, per language. Um, but in 
80 percent of the of the configuration syntax it is totally identical um, for all application languages so now um, enough talking so let's do some actual unit configuration um, let me show you the application configuration first so now we have we have learned we have a couple of objects we know listeners we know routes and the third one is applications applications are a wrapper for all applications we have under a unit instance and the good thing what you already saw here is the applications are decoupled from the routes the listener is decoupled from the route and the application. So you can configure application independently of all the routes and listener you have on top of it. That means you can easily switch listeners, route actions between your, between your application. This is very handy when it comes to A-B testing, when it comes to blue-green deployments, all that, kind of, all that kind of things. So in this case, um, our Python API hosts an an API endpoint that starts with slash API all the time. So we create a new route matcher that says anything that comes in with slash API at the beginning, star, anything that's, that's after slash API slash, will be sent to applications unit weather. Then we define application unit weather. And what we need here is we need the type. With the type, we tell Nginx unit, hey, this is Python version 3.10. We share a path where unit can find the code. The home is the Python virtual environment. A callable is inside of the application, the instance of the application object. The module is the module name in Python. I will show you this in the code. And this is an example of how to modern, like the modern, uh, to modify the environment. We can define environment variables in the configuration and access it inside of the of the Python code. So let's have a quick look into the source code. Um, so we have the virtual environment. We have our module name called wsgi.py. Um, you have like free of choice. You can call it application. You can call it WSGI, you can call it module start, whatever. Just make sure you point it um, as the module. Uh, the callable is this bit. In this case, it's the Flask application. And the application object of Flask is mapped to app. And that's the callable we refer in the unit configuration. The default one will be application. So if you call this application and not app, you'd have there's no need of defining the callable in here. But as the Flask default um, tutorials are pointing that out as app, um, I used app, did not change it, and used the callable syntax in my uh, configuration. So then we have a simple route that is API, we want weather favorites, and we have a weather service in here. that is basically send the weather favorites as an array and share it as a, as a JSON output. So that is basically all we have um, for the simple Python API. And now if we send this configuration to unit, that means it will configure the application object then we will see in the front end that we can reach out to this application object and we see the the weather favorites in our front end. so let's do this so this is a way you can send um, configuration to the unit server um, let me explain this in in a little bit more detail uh, we have two ways to for unit to listen for configuration changes the default way is a Unix socket. And this can be changed into a TCP port, um, IP address and port combination as well. Um, so that means if you change that to uh, localhost 9999, for example, 
that you will, then you will add localhost 9999 slash config and you can get rid of the Unix socket. Then we have the put option, get will read the configuration, put will use the JSON file that we put here and send it to the, um, to the unit and config endpoint. Well, let's do this. Um, so reconfiguration done. If you have any errors, it will say error while reconfiguring. And then there is a unit log in var log unit dot log. Um, where you can trace down the, the errors while sending updates to the <clears throat> config endpoint. Okay, so now we reconfigured unit. So that means that the 501 error not implemented error should go away now, and it does. So again, um, we see the favorites here, and that shares the JSON response from the from the API, and click on them. Weather data for Seattle, Island Cork, San Francisco. Um, so that is that. It, that is because we have slash API, and Unit now knows. Hey, anything that is slash API will directly be sent to the Unit Weather application. If you want to host another application, for example, NV2, and you want to build this in Java or you want to build this in PHP, no problem. Change this from API v1 slash, duplicate this thing, create another object with v2 and send it to another part of the, to another application object. So that is how flexible that is. It's all one configuration syntax, one configuration file, um, and it's all the same for all programming languages. Again, the request router option is something we already saw. It's very powerful based on incoming metadata of the request, host name, URI, cookies, headers, methods, um, arguments, and URI segments. Um, we can make route decisions. And this is one of the biggest differences against uh, Nginx. Um, because in Nginx, we most of the time use location-based matching. And here with unit, we have a router implementation that can match any important meta information of the HTTP request and invoke actions accordingly. So that's what we already discussed. Um, just maybe as a little wrap up so you can take a screenshot from that and or like use it as a, as a reference. As said, the router object in unit is very, very powerful um, and it can, it can do a lot, a lot of different things, but it would take too much time to go into very details in, for, the, for the routing stuff. So that's why we covered here the real basics. Um, we have great examples on the website and the link will be in this presentation in a bit. So um, make sure you check this out if you have more questions about the Nginx router, uh, the Nginx unit router. Right, so this as a, as a diagram to illustrate what we already saw in the demos, just to, to wrap it up, we saw the listeners on the very left, which is the layer four implementation on the, the, the network stack. This opens some ports or sockets to connect you. Then we can send it to an upstream, which is the reverse proxying capabilities. It can send requests to the router or we can send it to the application straight. So the routes is an optional thing you can use, which is very powerful, but there's no need to use routes. You can send an incoming request directly to an application. Or if you want, and that's what we saw with the API, if you want to like disable some, some parts of the of an, of an hostname or URI, have a listener, send it to routes, and the routes can then return an HTTP response straight. Like, Anything that is slash API v1 is deprecated and that should return 502 right now, 501, 400 something. That is possible with the router as well. And then we have the 
application object and the file on disk, which is this share array option um, we saw for the single page application. And the good thing is to come back to the very start of this presentation, this illustrates the technique and the implementation we created because we believe that we can host the services and we can manage this application stack in a single product and make it therefore very, very easy, efficient and flexible to configure everything from your network to the routes and handling of the routes and incoming requests to the application runtime or web server capabilities. This is another representation of what we, of this diagram um, we saw just to wrap it up once more, the configuration we saw, the rest config. Um, I would like to show you one more thing because we, we did some updates, um, but let me do some config tweaking here uh, as we have time left. And I would really like to demo things on the product instead of hopping through the PowerPoint and stuff. Um, so this curl request will give us all the configuration we have currently loaded in unit. So you see the application unit thing is here. Our routes are here. All great. Good. So as it is all JSON based, what we can do is we can say localhost config. I'm just interested in all the listeners I have. So listeners. So it means if we say localhost config listeners, we can see all the listeners I have. If I want to see, okay, what is, um, for example, where is point 80 going to? Um, that means it says, okay, it passes to routes. In the same way, I can query the configuration here, I can update it. So that means if I would like to update the pass object, if I do this, it says routes. If I want to go straight to an application, no problem, I can use put again or post to curl this endpoint, specify my input and update the configuration. So same is for config uh, routes. So I can see all my, I can see my route object. And in this example, we have one route array that, have, that has all the matches and actions. Um, there's an alternative syntax to this um, that can create something that called named routes. So we can give routes a name. If you want to have multiple routes on the system, you can call this whole thing, this whole array will be named main. And then we can point a listener to the main route instead of an, an global routes object. Um, but that is well um, documented in our, on our website. Um, I said it's called named routes, and this has the benefit that you have multiple routes for multiple um, kind of applications and listeners. Right, so that was routes, and we can do the same thing with applications. Um, so for example, this is now applications. We can do the same thing here, unit weather. We'll just give the weather thing, and if I want to change the environment, environment, V, so let's change that actually. Um, we can do a put here, HD. So let's actually send something like 002. Reconfiguration done. When I query now the, let's, see, let's query the whole application object again, that prints now 002. That's a very handy way to reconfigure your application environment like database uses passwords, um, some feature toggles if you want to enable a feature toggle. Um, no need of doing that on the server directly. Make sure you connect to the config endpoint securely and change the environment in any way you want. Curl is supported. Um, curl is supported. Any HTTP client. I mean, I have another, another test done here with an IntelliJ-based implementation. So that works. Um, Postman will work. Any other HTTP client you have will, will work in the, in the exact same way. So that is the REST configuration here. 
As I said, you can send config updates to the endpoint, very specific, very fine graduated, or use the whole JSON file to send configuration to unit. True end-to-end -end TLS means that we have the opportunity to, or the options to attach the TLS to the listener. So we decouple it from all the application objects and application runtime uh, we support. For example, with Java, it is now very, very easy to host an HTTPS encrypted Java application or HTTPS enabled Java application on unit. As we moved out the HTTP configuration out of the, like if you have Spring Boot or had Spring Boot or any Tomcat based um, configuration, it was always painful to do this. And with Nginx unit, we have the TLS now on the router. No need to change anything in the Java app. No need to add things to the Java key store. It's all on the router. And uh, last but not least, I want to tell you a lot more about the Nginx unit security capabilities. And this is for um, applications that run on a VM, for example, or if you want to run multiple applications on a single virtual machine or a single server, um, Nginx unit can add a lot of security capabilities to this, to this runtime. So first, as we already heard, end-to-end -end TLS, we can manage the certificates. Um, so that means there is a, that there's a config endpoint for certificates. We can upload certificates to Nginx unit. Nginx unit will parse the certificates, will read the certificates, and there is a certificate endpoint in the API. So you can query the CNs. You will be able to query the expiration date, how long it's valid. You can see the root CA that was used to sign the certificate. Um, so it makes it very easy and transparent to see what certificates are loaded inside of your unit instance. Multi-cert matching with SNI um, means unit knows based on the incoming host name if SNI, if, if, uh, SNI is enabled and SNI is, is uh, in unit enabled per default. You send an HTTPS request, the host name will be in clear text. We will read the host name and pick the right certificate based out of a list of certificates configured on unit based on the incoming host name automatically. And it's all part of the API. So I said, you can query the API, the certificates with uh, the config API. Application isolation capabilities. Um, that sounds right now, maybe a little bit too deep, but um, to explain it, it is in general, the same idea or the same concept that you will see with Docker. If you run a container, the container is isolated from the Docker daemon or the host system of the Docker runtime or the container runtime. And we apply the same techniques with Nginx unit. So we can use um, the, the, the very simple thing is we have a run user per application. So that means you can create users and the uh, Nginx unit will create processes for the applications that then will listen or will operate under a given run user, like dot, dot, dot data or unit or any other application user you wanna, you can think of. Um, then ch root and cgroups is an, an isolation that we can isolate, for example, the file system. That means that the application process just sees the configured file system as its root, if you want. So there's an, no way to step out of this of this isolated file system. Um, and the same is this namespaces uh, configuration means that we can isolate the network and process runtime on the on the Linux box. So given you would from inside of your application, you would query the list of processes, you will just be able to see the processes that are under your created namespace. So you're not able to see the processes of all the other applications um, on, on that box. So that adds a lot of security to your 
backend and you're hosting, if you want to use Nginx, you need to host a lot of applications or different kinds of applications, different versions of applications on a single VM because they're all isolated. They're ne if, 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 it's, if it's needed like this, you can isolate each and every application in a way that it, it's not possible for, for this application to, let's say, see other directories of, of other applications at all. Um, without having the need of doc containerize them, you can you can put the things um, in the directory uh, as they are today. All right. Um, yeah, that's basically a combination of two things. Um, I talked about this. And now how to get started um, on all this. As that Nginx unit has a couple of resources, Nginx org slash unit um, to see the installation instructions. Um, code and issues are on GitHub. So um, go to github.com Nginx unit, um, give us a star. Let's talk about features, um, issues, if you want to try it out. If you have any problems or any questions regard whatever, we are around on GitHub. We are totally appreciate your feedback. So let us know what you think. We are happy to jump on the conversation. Um, we have a community Slack uh, from, from Nginx within with our own channel unit users there. So let's hop over to Slack and have a conversation there. Or if you prefer mailing lists, um, we still have a mailing list. It's the unit at nginx.org. And the installation, um, if you're like very impatient what to do right now, um, if you're on a Mac, brew install Nginx unit uh, on Linux, configure repository, then apt install unit to get started, or we have Docker images available for the specific languages, like for Python, PHP, Node.js, and they are on Docker Hub. You can find them under Nginx unit on Docker Hub and then see the tags section to see what Docker images and what tags are available for the given languages. Detailed instructions for all this can be find, found on uh, unit nginx org slash installation. And there are also a list of all the, the Docker images I've just, I've just mentioned. So that brings me finally to the Q and A section. Um, but I think, uh, let me check this. Um, there's just one open open question. Um, let me read that. Uh, will it be possible to configure the Java runtime to use EG Oracle JDK 8 and Open JDK 11? Yes, that is possible. Um, so given we have multiple Java applications need different languages, we can have the, the Java development or the Java runtime environment, sorry, for 8 and 11 on the single, on the same box. And the language module would then do the, the mapping accordingly, what version needs what Java runtime environment. So that is totally possible. Um, if you want to try that out, feel free. If you have any trouble, any problem with it, find us on GitHub, post your configuration. We are more than happy to do this and, and show you how that, how that works. Great, no more open questions. If there are no more open questions, um, we are right on time, which is good. And yeah, there are no more open questions. Thank you very much for joining and spending the uh, last 15 minutes with us. And I would like to pass then back to the Women's Foundation. Thank you so much, Timo, for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation YouTube page later today. We hope you will join us for future webinars and have a wonderful day.